welcome and good evening to a successor to my two videos about the MUS 1099 sound card replica and in this episode we want to compare the two sound cards that I've built over the last year. So almost a year ago I built or I assembled basically the uh, adlib reproduction effort. Um, this and the other sound card which is a creative music system slash Game Blaster clone. Both are open source. You can get their schematics and everything on GitHub. And they are actually um, from a similar era, right? So both came out in 1987, were the first sound cards to be available to consumers. And they're actually pretty similar in, in style. Both are 8-bit ISA slots, uh, slot cards. And the differences are with the synthesizer chips and the amplifier. So um, basically this here is only um, logic chips that decode addresses and uh, translate the data for the synth chips. And this here is the amplifier TA2025 with its associated filtering capacitors and everything. And um, here are the main synth ICs to Philips SAA 1099 and on the Adlib you've got um, the same bus interface chips here for addresses and data. Data going straight to the um, Yamaha YMF 3812 which is the OPL2. Um, output goes into this DAC uh, digital to analog converter and then to this little amplifier here. This whole thing is mono whereas the Game Blaster clone is also stereo. Anyway, so these are the two cards. What are the feature differences? Um, let's have a look. And since my great new iPhone camera fluked out earlier, uh, the mic is acting up, I'm gonna just show you this and not draw it again. Hopefully this time sound will work. Um, so on the Adlib we got the OPL2 synthesizer. I've also written down the OPL3 which comes on later cards and many of you will probably have, if you're into retro stuff, a Sound Blaster Pro 2.0 or better. And they all from that point on have an OPL3 synthesizer. And as mentioned the Creative Music System had the SAA 1099. So um, both the OPL2 and the SAA 1099 came out on consumer cards in 1987. OPL3 came 1990 or 91, not sure about this, couldn't find something uh, very quickly, which confirmed the 1991 date. Um, sound was mono on the OPL2, stereo on the SAA, so that's better, sort of. But the OPL3 caught up pretty quickly uh, and also added stereo sound for the FM synthesis. Voices. The Opel 2 had nine two operator voices, two operators I will explain in a bit down here, or six melodic voices plus five drums. So either only melodic voices or some less voices and drum sounds basically. The SAA had um, six voices per chip, stereo voice per chip, which makes 12 voices in total. And uh, the Opel 3 had the same features as the um, Opel 2, but f for um, stereo purposes, basically, you had 18 voices in total, melodic voices. Or you could also um, not use two operator voices, but four operator voices, and up to six of those, with a combination of drum sounds. And what do I mean by this operator stuff? So basically, the Opel 2 and Opel 3 were FM synthesis chips, which meant that they could use additive or multiplic multiplication, addition or multiplication for forming new waveforms from some standard base waveforms. Additive synthesis basically takes two waveforms of different frequencies and adds them together to create a more complex shape. Similar thing can happen um, if you multiply basically those two um, which gives you uh, like a different frequency spectrum with high and low frequencies varying over time. 
Okay, so there are different and more complicated ways to use those two operators or those four operators to create complex and rich sounds. I can explain probably this in another video, but it will take too long for today. The base waveforms of the Opel 2 were these four, basic sine wave or the absolute of a sine wave or um, like only the first half of the sine wave, which is similar to a rectangle wave from the sound that it produces, or the first quarter of the sine wave repeated, which is similar to a sawtooth wave. Both are kind of smoothed, so the sound of the Opel 2 is very distinct compared to something else. For example, the SAA 1099 produced regular square waves, which gives it a much harsher and more synthetic sound, sort of, like the OPL2. So this could be a disadvantage, but it makes a sound style of its own, basically. So when you look at the facts, um, the OPL2 could definitely make more complex, more interesting sounds, more natural sounding stuff, whereas the SAA had stereo support. And yeah, but rather limited um, abilities in creating sounds and I think none of the games fully used the chips to its to their whole potential and yeah the whole thing was on the market for I don't know two or three years at most so it never got a real chance to get driven to the maximum anyway um, now let's compare a couple of games so you can hear for yourself which card sounds better to your ears and um, that's already it for today i would ask you to please subscribe to my channel because that will help me in the long run to make more videos and uh, also like and subscribe uh, like and share if you want but the most important thing is uh, click on the little subscribe button down below in this video this way you can help me greatly Thank you and enjoy the comparison of the games. Thank you.